Completely ignoring car problems, nothing is able to stop this man from securing a P1 finish apart from Singapore. Unless he wins that one too this year, then we're fucked. But honestly, how do you expect to stop such a reckoning force and a racing robot? Well, that's where this video comes into play, ladies and gentlemen. I have devised very thorough, accurate, and advanced strategies to stop Max Verstappen from winning. Now, you might think this just includes what other F1 teams can do. But no, I am also including you. That is right, guys. You are a part of this too. Because in order to stop such a reckoning force, we need every single available resource. Here are the strategies that I have devised. As you can tell, I am taking this extremely seriously, and if you are not prepared to be on my level of seriousness, might as well just leave. Now don't let anybody know about these strategies, because the last thing I want for you guys is for Christian Horner to be knocking on your doorstep with a big baseball bat that's shaped like a penis, because that is the last thing he sent to one of his female employees. Thank you Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. Now you guys hear that sound right there? That's right, ladies and gentlemen, that is the sound of hackers, big companies, and devious people accessing their computers to be ready to intercept your personal information on the internet. But by turning on Surfshark VPN, encryption, secure tunneling, and masking IP addresses, these features absolutely slam dunk on all these third parties trying to get your private info, like your private Charles Leclerc photo collection, as it keeps you and your data safe. Wow! You can also connect to servers outside of your country to access blocked websites and even watch F1 streams for completely free. Yes, you heard that right, guys. It is free. So check out Surfshark VPN with the link right here or in the description. You get many months free and it also comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. But you won't be using that since Surfshark is the best that it could already be. Wow! The Baguette Special Operations Team. Now, this strategy is honestly the best and my personal favorite. If you guys have watched my previous videos, then you obviously understand what this means for Alpine and Max. But just as a quick rundown of what this strategy involves, basically get a French team with French drivers and make them do a very French thing, aka Esteban and Pierre will go, oh look guys, it's turn one. And then just send it full fucking throttle, fuck breaking, I have no idea what that is, and just Send the French baguettes crashing into Max Verstappen. Mission complete. Now I know Alpine is a backmarker team. They qualify in P20 and P19. Esteban even celebrates like he won the fucking lottery just from getting into Q2. Hmm. There is nothing interesting on Instagram right now. Yeah! Whoa! Whoa! Did, did Esteban win the race? Did, did Esteban win the race? It's such a sad sight to see. However, this makes Alpine the perfect candidate for slamming right into Max Verstappen because now the team actually has a purpose to exist. Now I know you guys are saying, oh Rick, how could this possibly work? It's too difficult to dive bomb from so far back. They're in P19 and P20, how would that be possible? I bet you can't even pull that off yourself. <sighs> God damn it, guys. Are you really gonna say that I can't pull that off myself? Watch me. Good morning F1 gamers and gaming gamers, today we're going to be gaming on this epic F123 game where I'm going to be gaming and stopping Max Verstappen from gaming. That is right guys, today we're going to make him finally lose a race. This is the Baguette Special Operations team in the works, ladies and gentlemen. You are about to witness greatness. But obviously as you can see, I have chosen Esteban Ocon now. It just really pains me to do this because Esteban, you know, he's probably one of the fairest F1 teammates of all time. Never, never in my life I saw a difference like Esteban. So it really pains me to do this and choose him as the driver to crash into Max, you know, because Esteban has not had any previous experiences with doing this ever in his career, especially, you know, when he's lapping Max, I could never imagine him crashing into Max Verstappen while he was lapping him, that would be just completely insane. But today we're gonna be slam dunking on Max in turn one, so let's fucking do this. All right, let's fucking go guys, come on, let's go, let's go, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this. Let's, uh, yes, let's fucking go. Come, come, come to daddy, Max. Come to daddy, Max. 
Come to, not you, Paris. Fuck you. What are you doing? Come on. Come to Daddy Max. Come to Papa. Come to Papa. Come to Papa because he beats you. What the fuck? Oh, what the fuck? Are you right? What the you know, fuck? How did I miss that? Oh, my God. God damn, Jamie, pull up the replay. Now, turns out, guys, there was actually a cyclist in turn one the entire time. I cannot believe this. This just completely threw off my focus. I was locked into getting Max, but turns out there was this idiot cyclist on a Formula One track going on his day. Like, what are you even doing, man? You can't even compete in this sport, god damn it. I cannot believe this, guys. Like, this is the reason why Formula One is dead. All right, let's go again, baby. Let's go. Let's go. We're gonna go in. Oh, inside of Carlos. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, we're gonna get him. We're gonna get him. We're gonna get him. Oh, and I fucking fucked it up. Nah, this is, this is because I'm playing on keyboard, guys. You know, I'm at a massive disadvantage. I'm playing in the park as well, guys. So, you know, you can see all the birds chirping and everything like that. You know, this is just... Oh, my God, man. I'm just in a massive disadvantage right now. Let's go, baby. All right, we got this this time. We got this this time. We're gonna get. We're gonna nail this. We're gonna nail this. We're gonna nail this. Come on, come on. Break, 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 break. Are you fucking serious? Wow, that was a heck of an Are you okay. fucking serious? My wheel fucking broke and it did not even scratch the guy. What is the and okay and all the birds in the park are getting to my face, guys. What is this? All right, guys, we're finally gonna get Max. Jesus fucking Christ! Inside of Paris, let's go. Come on. Come on, let's get him at least. Come on, please. Are you okay? That was a big one. Confirm you're okay, please. <sighs> Fucking finally. Fucking finally. That took only what? Fucking... 10 attempts. Oh, uh, and the birds are getting into my face again. Alright guys, I think it's about time I got serious. Last year I went into 2023 as the biggest Fernando Alonso fan, but as you all know, regardless of who you support, everyone is a Ferrari fan. So as someone who came into 2023 supporting both Carlos and Charles, I came out the other side straight up looking like this. What the fuck, Ferrari? I had the SF23 as my Valentine last year, and immediately after that, the car dies in Bahrain, and the team did such an amazing pit stop that it only took them 60 minutes instead of an hour. F1 teams can start their seasons differently. Ferrari starts off their Formula 1 seasons either like this, or like this. Whoa! And in 2024, they've started off this season like this. Two Ferraris about to do battle. Mons are all over again. No one wants to get passed into the spoon corner, but Hamilton's gonna have to give the place. This is the Bearman move. Little dummy shimmy to the inside. Wheel to wheel, you're watching a Ferrari take the lead of the Grand Prix. Ferrari start to 2024. As well for Sainz on the inside of the spoon and through he goes. It's an absolute carbon copy of the pass he did on Hamilton. Has been one of the strongest stars. What a performance! What a comeback! A Ferrari 1-2! Headed by Carlos Sainz! Holy shit. Ferrari is by far the strongest team that can possibly challenge Red Bull in 2024 and maybe the years ahead. They have the resources, the experience, they have been fixing most of their problems so far. Even if I have a gut feeling that they're still gonna find a way to fuck up somehow. But they have the potential to be such an amazing team that puts an end to Red Bull and Max's domination. Now don't get me wrong here, other teams have the potential to do exactly the same. But in 2022, Charles took the spotlight with a third 34 point lead for the championship after three races and max was nowhere to be seen in the top five and then we have the rest of the season let's just not talk about that but in 2024 carlos Sainz has been absolutely on fire he's been driving so well snatching a victory in australia and has been consistently on the podium he has just been absolutely amazing this season and he's not even in ferrari next year what the fuck? Lewis Hamilton and Ferrari replacing Carlos will either be the greatest decision ever made or the biggest regret that will haunt Ferrari for years to come. There is no in-between. A Ferrari masterclass is the closest thing that can stop Max Verstappen. This means solid pit stops, proper team management, good strategies, a reliable car, a strong team principle, teamwork, and competence. If Ferrari pulls this off, they will have a strong chance to stop Max as they've already done that more than once. 
But this is Ferrari we're talking about. If the team doesn't fuck up, the drivers will. Have you guys ever heard of the term money can't buy happiness? Well, even if that's the case, it can sure as hell buy you a goddamn competent Formula One team. And that is exactly what Lawrence Stroll has done with Aston Martin. Ever since he owned the team, they've hired so many talented people. They got Ander Hedges from Red Bull, who is now their senior project designer. Dan Fallows and Andrew Alacy, who are also from Red Bull. The two-time world champion Fernando Alonso, who is consistently putting tractors in places they shouldn't even be in. Honda as their main exclusive supplier for 2026, a strong team of mechanics, Lance Stroll whose job is just to exist, and a pit crew that is constantly improving. As you can see, these are all the things that make Aston Martin the competitive force that it is today. Wait, let me just remove this real quick. Okay, now we mean business. All right, guys, I'll see you back at the fact. Buying your way into victories in sports is often seen as cheating, but in the world of Formula One, it's the only way of getting to the top. The owners of the team have to be willing to spend a shit ton of cash for every second saved on the racetrack. This means hiring the best engineers, designers, managers, mechanics, trainers, and most importantly, drivers. Now I know why I just removed Lance Stroll from the list of things that make Aston Martin competitive just just a couple seconds ago and I'm pretty sure all of you guys know why I did that and of course it is because he is just simply in a different level ladies and gentlemen that is right Lance Stroll is simply a driver so good at driving that he decides to hold back his true power and start every race at the back of the grid to give others a chance and if you think otherwise you are simply not so wise Aston Martin even had to make his car slower in the straights because they just knew that he was too good. Oh, guys, we got Lance Stroll over here. Why is he so zesty? If Aston Martin continues to invest into their team like this, it is hard not to see them as a competitive force in the future. This applies to just any other Formula 1 team as well. Toto Wolff might just buy Max Verstappen just for the sake of getting Mercedes a win. Aston Martin has made the right move so far, and of course, some setbacks might happen, but they will bounce back. A nearing 50-year-old Alonso challenging Max for the championship. Mark my words, that day will come. And especially with the unstoppable force of Lance Stroll on the team, God knows what they would be able to do. Fernando Alonso, Lewis Hamilton, Nico Hülkenberg, Sergio Perez, Kevin Magnussen, Valtteri Bottas, and Daniel Ricciardo. These guys have been around the world of Formula 1 for a while and are close to retiring. Apart from Alonso, of course, we all know he's just a rookie, so, you know, gotta take it easy on him. But if all these senior drivers decide to take more risks in their career, like Fernando taking a seat at Red Bull, Lewis Hamilton doing the same, Sergio Perez pushing to his absolute limits to challenge Max, we could see someone eventually stop him. And if you think all of these guys are washed, stop right there and take a look at this. Uh, guys, yeah, I, I think I, I forgot the footage for this montage. Oh my fucking god. Where is everything? This is so loud. Why is this music even playing? There's nothing on screen. What the fuck? What? Why is this so loud? Oh my fucking god! Jos Verstappen. Now believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, the full name of this project is actually the Jos Verstappen Project. <laughs> Most of you already know how this is gonna go. Now for some of you viewers out there who are already married, or maybe some of you who are about to have children, congratulations. Honestly, I hope everything goes well. That must be such an amazing thing, you guys. But don't celebrate too soon. You see, your child has the potential, the capacity, to be the person who finishes Max Verstappen's domination. But if you guys are gonna have a girl, you know, go ahead and cherish her. You know, maybe put her in F1 Academy. I think she'll do amazing. And you know, I personally want a daughter myself. I think they're absolutely adorable. And maybe, you know, she could be the first modern era female Formula One driver. But if it's a boy, put him in your basement, have him do a hundred laps in the fucking simulator, and then boom, the first 10 year old race winner in Formula One history. Let that sink in, ladies and gentlemen. Let that sink 
in. Now, for those of you who don't think this is possible, I need you guys to please recall with your memory, all right? Please remember a question that a wise man once asked. Gentlemen, a short view back to the past. 30 years ago, Niki Lauda told us, take a trach a monkey, place him into the cockpit, and he is able to drive the car. Now, what makes a 10-year-old any different, ladies and gentlemen? Exactly. What is stopping you from making the next Max Verstappen? What the fuck is stopping you guys? Honestly, what the fuck is stopping you? Hello, Maxime. Mm? What the fuck is stopping you, man? Honestly. What the fuck is stopping you from making a different kind of animal, but the same beast? What the fuck? Upcoming rookies are the closest thing we'll get to a Max Verstappen challenger. We've seen what Oscar Piastri can do in his first season. We've seen Lewis Hamilton's rookie season alongside Fernando. We've seen Oli Behrman on debut. And we also have the promising Kimi Raikkonen, who has been performing well in Formula 2. Wait, wait a minute. Kimi Antonelli. Out of all these rookies who have the potential to stop Max from winning, you might ask me the question, who is most likely to pull that off, Rick? Well, I actually have a really smart answer to that. And no, I'm not gonna say Fernando, guys. I'm not gonna say anything silly. I mean, come on, guys. Did you really believe that I was gonna say Fernando Alonso, a driver who's been driving for 20 years, is gonna be stopping Max as a rookie? Did you really believe I was gonna say that? As I said from the start, this is a serious video. How stupid do you think I am to not be able to tell the rookie who is most likely going to stop Max? How stupid do you think I am? It is obviously the GOAT Logan Sargent. Country roads, take me Oh